Shame on you. Shame on me. Shame on us. When you were a child, did you ever have your parent or caregiver do this number? Shame on you. You know, this little gesture, even before they spoke, you saw this going on and you knew you were in trouble. Okay? So, then you were like, wow, I gotta go somewhere. I gotta get out of here. She, she or she's doing this number. I gotta go hide somewhere, right? So, we see that, we remember that maybe as we were children. But what about when we, we become adults? Have you ever been working and doing a job or a task and you just didn't feel like you did it right? You didn't feel like you were good enough. You were nervous and maybe you needed to, to use your notes. And maybe you couldn't do it without your notes. Well, maybe it was that you did something and you had this feeling come over you. It's a feeling of guilt. Maybe you carried that feeling around with you and you couldn't quite shake that feeling off. When we talked last week about guilt, and we're in our sermon series, Unchained, Dancing Freely to the Rhythms of God's Grace. So we talked about guilt, those feelings we carry, but now let's talk about shame. Shame is guilt untreated. Untreated. What happens when something's untreated? It gets infected. It manifests. We carry it around. We camp out. We hold on. We can't break free. So if we have that kind of feeling, how are we supposed to dance? We're walking like this. We're walking like this. We're not making any eye contact with anyone. And we're walking like this. Maybe it's even worse, and we're hiding like this. But are we really hiding? Maybe you thought you were wearing a mask. Before I came to know Jesus, I wore a mask. I dressed myself up really pretty. I put on my best makeup, my coolest clothes I could find, and I didn't think that anyone could see my shame. I didn't think that anyone could see the way I was living. I didn't think that anyone could see the way I behaved. But everyone could see. I felt shame, I had guilt that was untreated, all those instances that I explained to you, it crept in like a thief in the night. Mm. And what happens when you steal something? Okay, so you stole something. But then, you don't confess it, you don't repent, and then you become a thief. Mm. So we go from having a feeling of doing something wrong and holding guilt over here to an identity and then we live in it. We camp out in it. We hold on to it. Amen? Maybe you grew up with a punishing God. Maybe you grew up with a God where you felt like if you did something wrong, if you lived a certain way, if you talked back to your parents, if you weren't good enough, that you didn't deserve to have a relationship with God. You didn't deserve it. You felt shame. Well, I came to tell you about a God that's not a punishing God. I came to tell you about a God that loves you. He loves you with a passion and a purpose that you can't hide from. And I came to tell you about that God. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus today. We want to tell you that some of times we feel shame. We come to lay this shame 
before you. We come to lay this shame at the foot of your cross. We came to tell you, Lord, that we can't do this by ourselves, that we need you. We come seeking your miracle today. We come asking in your scripture, through your word, to show us that we don't have to feel this shame today. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. We already feel your Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, help us to take our eyes from looking down and pull them to looking up to you today, Father. We love you. Come, oh Holy Spirit, come. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Where do we first see shame in the Bible? Well, you guys know about that, right? We first see it in Genesis. Who are the people that first felt shame? Amen. So, we want to look in verse 8. We see, then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking. Wait a minute. He was walking. He was walking. He was walking with them. He's Emmanuel. God with them, with us. He didn't go away somewhere and say, I'm just going to go ahead and leave them. They're, they're just not worthy. He was walking in the cool of the day. <clears throat> and we see that they hid from the Lord among the trees and in the garden. But the Lord God called to Adam and said, Where are you? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. God knows where he is. God knows where Adam is. He knows where we are at all times. Whether we think we're hiding, no matter how we hide, he knows where we are. What he's really saying is, I haven't left you. I will never leave you. I'm going to stay with you and I love you. He knows where he is. Amen? Amen. He answered, I heard you in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. But at this point, they were naked. But he was so full of shame that he hid. So the shame that we feel may be sitting here right now. It's not the first time shame was ever felt. We see that this happened all this time ago. The man said, who told you you were naked? <laughs> who told you you were naked? I and mean, is that what he's really saying here? Or is he really saying, I'm here for you. Don't forget that. Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? We've all done that. The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some food from the tree. Our secrets. And when we have secrets, 
they manifest and they make us sicker and sicker and sicker. This is such an amazing time for me right now because some people might say, ah, that girl over there, she's just the associate pastor. She doesn't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> but I felt shame. I lived shame for years. As a recovering alcoholic, I walked around with this guilt, feelings about all the things I had done. I waited way too long to let that guilt out, so shame crept in, and then I camped out in it. And I lived in it, and it was my identity. Years went by of shame, remorse, of just incomprehensible demoralization. So what happened then, a lot of things that I'm going to skip over. <laughs> I don't have to live in my past anymore. I'm going to look down at my feet. I'm going to feel the love of Jesus. Just as Jesus loved Adam and Eve and said, where are you? Why are you hiding? I'm here to love you. I'm here to save you. I'm here to show you that you can repent and I can give you a new life and walk without shame. When we look When we look in the Hebrews, we see where God says he heals. He casts out demons. He bores our diseases. So if he casts out demons and he bores our diseases, do you think he can heal the shame? Yes. yes. Amen. So if he can heal our shame and cast out demons, if he can touch a woman and heal her fever, okay, so he touched the woman and he healed her fever. But not only did he do that, she got up and she started to serve him. Yes. Amen? Amen. So not only did he take away the fever, take away the shame, he can pull us up and help us to dance freely in the rhythms of God's yeah. grace. Yeah. Pastor Ralph and I have been out visiting, and he's just a, a beautiful saint of God. He's doing a lot of teaching with me. Yeah. And when we walk into the hospital, I hear him doing this da 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 da
a cloud of witnesses. What do you think of when you hear that? I think of this big, ancient amphitheater with all these saints who have gone before us. All these people that are saying, it's okay. I've been there. I've lived it. He's healed me. Keep going. You see them out there and you can almost see them cheering them on like this with their fists pumped in the air. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Amen. Now there's a Greek word for that. It's eperistatos. Come on. <laughs> eperistatos means to be set, yeah. to surround to come around and entangle to where you can't move. Come on. What it says, we need to throw this off. Yes. Throw it off. And let us run the race with perseverance. The race that is marked out for us. Yes. You might be saying, wait a second. A race has a finish line. And you all keep preaching to me that this is not a race. Meaning, this is a journey. And we're on it, and we don't graduate, we don't hang a plaque on the wall, but we're talking about a race. God, Jesus, is the finish line. Yes. Yes. He took it up. He's done it. It's finished. We're going to fix our eyes on Jesus, yes. who is the finish line. And he's the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Jesus took on our shame. We are the ones who make the decisions to keep holding on to it. Yes. He scorned its shame. Wait a minute, let me say that again. Scorned its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Amen. That's amazing. Now, maybe you are hiding right now. Maybe you're covering yourself. Maybe you're covered by the fig leaves of your good works. Maybe you're trying to, to cover it all up. And maybe you got a good mask on right now. Maybe you're trying to work better, walk better, talk better, act better, look prettier. Dance better. Preach better. Yeah. Without any notes. <laughs> Maybe you're learning Greek. <laughs> but how can we dance to the rhythms of God's grace when we are weighted down by shame? We can't sing. We can't dance. We can't have a relationship. We can't have a relationship with each other. God is waiting for us to have a relationship with Him. Amen. 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 So I want to ask you to do something right now. I want to ask you to close your eyes. And I want to ask you to think about something that you are weighted down with shame. Something that you've been carrying maybe for a long time. Maybe something that the shame has crept in like a thief in the night. You hadn't even realized it came, and now it's here. Maybe it's something you've been carrying all the way back from your childhood. You were embarrassed to tell anyone what happened or how you feel. Maybe it crept in when your behavior just felt like maybe God didn't love you because he didn't approve of how you behaved. No matter how you're feeling or why, while your eyes are closed, I want to stand with you today. And I want us to remember God took our shame. We don't have to carry it anymore. Jesus died on the cross 
for our sins. That includes shame. Are your shoulders starting to go down just a little bit? If we confess our sins one to another, to release these things that are inside of us. God is waiting. He's waiting to work through someone in your life. Look this week to someone in your life. Tell them something that you've been carrying. Look for Jesus in this person. And remember, we don't have to carry this shame anymore. Jesus carried our shame. He still does. We're the only ones that hold on. He's already letting go. Are your shoulders a little lighter now? Have they come down just another notch? Take a deep breath in. A deep breath out. Open your eyes. When we come to the table of the Lord, this is a time when we can say, I made a mistake. Shame crept in. I didn't realize it, maybe. This is a time when we can let go of our shame. This is a place that we could say, I can't do this by myself anymore. This is a place where God is going to wash us clean of our sin, body and blood of Christ. So as you come down to the table this morning, I want to ask you to remember that shame when your eyes were closed. And as you Receive his body and his blood. Remember that you don't have to hold on to this shame anymore. Amen. Amen. Amen.
And he lifted up a common loaf of bread and he broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Take it. And then he lifted up the cup among them and said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink all of you and do this always in remembrance of me. 